So this is from um, one of my videos, and these are some of the objections I've been getting. So let's start with this one, because I like talking about the, I don't want to get necessarily into a bunch of numbers on this video. Let's look at uh, some objections that are not based on numbers, because uh, DeAndre and I went through a lot of numbers addressing some of these, and that I think that sometimes just confuses the audience. Um, yeah. But so we're talking about risk. So he says, <clears throat> um, and this is from my answering Velocity Banking Answering Objections Part 3 with DeAndre Clayton. You ask, what is the extra risk? Well, for starters, HELOC rates are subject to increase, a risk which is non-existent with fixed rate mortgages. So here specifically, he's talking about replacing your mortgage with a first seen HELOC. Okay. Right. I just want to be clear, that is a use case for velocity banking. That is not necessarily velocity banking per se. That is a use case that may make sense for some people. Yes, rates could also decrease, but we are talking risks. Secondly, other HELOC conditions such as total amount could be changed by the bank. Thirdly, to echo your psychology point, having a reserve of money handy can be risky for some people as it will be hard for them to resist the temptation to use it and spend it on the latest gadgets or whatever. So those are kind of three different points. And he's trying to make the yeah. point that it's riskier to use a, in this example, a first lien HELOC. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not a fixed rate. Uh, the bank could change the amount of credit you're given, the, your line of credit. Um, and having access to a pile of money could be a risk for pe for some people. Yep. So it's three, three kind of objections. Absolutely. So I agree with everything Thomas just said. So shout out to Thomas there in, in the comment section. So as someone... Yes, that thank you. Thank you for your comment, Tom. Thomas. Yeah. So as someone that is pro velocity banking here, what I'm going to absolutely agree with is yes, the, the HELOC could be shut down in a worst case scenario, frozen, locked up, which just becomes the rate can change because it's not fixed, although you can find fixed rate HELOC. So if you yes. wanted to yes. have some level of consistency with a, a home equity line of credit, and you're looking at variable versus fixed, the advantage of variable is the opportunity for the rate to go down. That's really about it, the rate to go down. With the fixed, you can project the next five years of that fixed rate, three years, whatever it may be. So you're able to have an easier projection when it comes to a fixed rate HELOC. So not to say that fixed rate HELOCs don't exist, they're out there, right? And so that is an option, Okay. And to Thomas's point, yes, I would, I would lean with him that there is a good amount of people that even I work with, even clients, I have many clients that are not doing velocity banking right now and they still hire me. We're still, I'm still coaching them because it's not just about velocity banking. There's a lot of content out there that makes it seem like velocity banking is the God of all, you know, debt elimination strategies. It's the Supreme. And you could make an argument that Maybe, right? In 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 certain mm -hmm. situations, mm -hmm. you could totally make the argument for that. But there are so many people that do not have the financial capacity, literacy, education, discipline, and history, money, and especially lump sums of it. So if I'm dealing with a mother of Correct. four, if I'm dealing with a mother of four and she's 45 years old and all she's ever known was debt from her parents and then when she got married and she married into debt, she came with debt, he came with debt, and they've been in debt ever since. And now the kids got debt because they're in college. And then to show her velocity banking, and then to say, hey, you've got two, three, four hundred grand built up in your property in equity. If we get a two, three, four hundred thousand dollar home equity line of credit and consolidate all your debt and recover cash flow, and it's gonna be great and all amazing and have all this increase in cash flow, we're only gonna need a hundred from the four. So she still has 300 grand available. I'm not in their house. I'm not hanging out with them day in and day out. So if another guru like me comes along in their feed and promotes an, a real estate investment strategy that costs 250K and they have 300 available and they don't have the principles, the rules of leverage locked down and they're trying to do this strategy and invest and create cash flow and create wealth and do infinite banking and do all these things. I have seen it happen time and time again where to Thomas's point, they do get the gadgets. They do buy the things. They do do the bathroom, right? They renovate this. 
they they just keep spending money because they haven't taken the time to experience of not having enough in the sense of not leveraging for a period of time even though they've been living their whole life paycheck to paycheck the difference mm -hmm. is the difference is prior to them living their whole lives paycheck to paycheck that was normalcy that was their normal state of mind there was no coaching involved there was no accountability involved it was just husband wife kids co-workers friends money is taboo it doesn't get discussed in the church it doesn't happen at the dinner table it doesn't happen at the office it doesn't happen at the friends giving the friends out it it, it doesn't happen then they get on youtube because they they get to a point where they're so frustrated mama four is frustrated of being in debt all her life she does not want her kids to live the way she lives so now she goes to YouTube, boom, finds Logan, finds Denzel, finds the Quack brothers, finds all these like, oh my God, what's going on? Okay. From this point on, if we, the content creators are not careful on how we educate and how we coach this mom before, what will happen is we'll dump this whole new way of thinking on her, which creates abundance mindset, which is great, creates opportunity, which is awesome. We give her that $400,000 HELOC that she's been spending all these years just paying down on her, on her mortgage and naturally the property appreciated over time, we could set her back tremendously to Thomas's point. If I give her a $400,000 right. HELOC, most likely this mom of four will probably pay off some debt. She'll probably do the right things initially. Now she gets to experience for the first time the freedom of having an extra whole paycheck at the end of the month left over. Was not there prior hadn't been there for decades and now it's there all of a sudden in a flash it happened so fast the money's there right logan it's like and yeah, you could think naturally yeah. okay we're on the we're on fire mm -hmm. boom wife said we need to do the kitchen you know mm -hmm. i gotta do the gutters i gotta replace the gutters i gotta do the parkinson's roof. law parkinson's law boom 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 denzel i don't know what happened you know, the kids, we had to take them on a vacation. We had to been on vacation in 10 years. And we start making excuses and, oh, it's only this much. And now it went from 150 to 2, 250 to 3. All of a sudden, where would all the cash flow go? So this is why point, it is. I totally agree with him. If yeah, this is why. Like it... me, right? Sorry. If I'm dealing with someone like me that has pre existing discipline, has gone through Dave Ramsey seven baby steps three, four times, is giving to the church, is. Uh, consistently tithing is consistently saving is contributing to their 401k 10 15 20 percent of their uh, their paycheck and they're still cash flow positive and they have these disciplines already set and they want acceleration they want velocity they're not worried about those risks because they're not going to max out their heloc they know how to leverage properly they're going to become an ally of the bank not a liability to the bank the only way the heloc gets shut down on you in today's environment is when you become a liability to the bank. And even in the event that the bank gets swallowed up, becomes insolvent or bankrupts itself, a bigger bank's gonna buy them out. You're gonna have a different name, okay? You log in a different portal, it's gonna look different. The HELOC's still gonna be there, right? And even if, okay, the, the HELOC reduces on you or gets frozen on you, I just go to a different bank. I mean, there you go. Right, so let's just say I'm doing velocity banking, blah, 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 blah. And I, you know, if you're a velocity banking practitioner, here's another assumption here, but this is implied in this particular world. If you're doing velocity banking, you're doing infinite banking, chances are you're politically involved in the marketplace, the economic marketplace. You're paying attention to global markets. You're paying attention to stock market. You're reading articles. You're not just watching Netflix. Like you're, you're aware of what's going on. You know the status of your bank, the healthiness of it. If you start to see banks uh, start consolidating again, which they have been the last few years, and banks getting bought out, and you're staying up to date with this stuff, and you listen to content, content creators like myself and Logan and many others, and you foresee your bank maybe not looking too healthy, you can always go to a different bank. You do not have to display loyalty. We can go to another bank, stronger maybe a better rate HELOC because the equity in my property did not disappear as I was eliminating debt. It doesn't just ra magically disappear. If my home decreases in large amounts, and we're talking 100, 200,000 plus dollars, there's a different conversation going on. We're buying guns and ammo at that point, okay? Like civil war broke out. Like you're not thinking about, oh my God, is my HELOC gonna be frozen? 
You're thinking about guns, ammo, food storage, you know, allies with the neighbors, because if the property of your home decreases by multiple six figures, you know that something else globally or on the news is, is happening. It's not just, you're not just in your neighborhood and all of a sudden your home loses $300,000 worth of valuation and that was your HELOC gap. You know what I'm saying? Like there's steps to this. Yep, so absolutely. We're absolutely. creating we're creating scenarios that just haven't happened, right? Or right. even if they did, I'm, I promise you that's not going to be your concern. Like right. you're, you're you're looking at something else right now. And then when that storm passes, then we go back, right? So there's these things where it's like, yeah, this 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 is risk. This is risk. That's risk. But I've evaluated it. This still makes sense for me. I like having liquidity. I'm a good steward. I'm good at all these things, and so you've eliminated risk. Right. right.